This is the car that we intend to do the Pomeroy the weekend in. I've done the Pomeroy twice in it already. So, you know, it's, uh, it's not unusual. But there's a few rules that have got to be, you know, set. And, and one of them is it's got to have a, um, a catch tank for the radiator, which we've done. It's got to have little bits on it to tell well to tow. It's got to have a little mark on the ignition to tell it to turn the ignition off. And I also put seat belts in it because I think the minute you drive out on the circuit, you want seat belts. But it goes lovely. And the history behind the car is I got involved in building a racing Alvis Grey Lady, which was very successful. Jerry Marshall, first time out, came second at Goodwood in it. But I'm afraid it was a bit clever for them people and they didn't really understand it and said, oh, no, you can't race that here. Because obviously the A35 is completely standard. I mean, they haven't done anything to that. I and mean, we all know that A35s can beat Jaguars easily. But a modified Alvis, whoa, that's too much. So they, they said, oh, no, you can't race that here again. So it did depress me a bit because I'd made a big effort to build the car. But anyway, so I sold that. But in the meantime, obviously, I was collecting a load of bits, and I thought, well, it seems such a shame with the bit of knowledge I've got and all the bits I've got not to have a car. So I got onto a bloke called Chris Prince. He's a really good bloke, and he sells bits, and he breaks them up if they're desperate and sells projects, and very good man. Anyway, I rung up Chris Prince, and I talked to him about it, and he said, oh, he said, you won't believe it. He said, but I've just pulled out a really good... Alvis Grey Lady com Tickford Convertible. He said it's had long-term ownership, but the man took the wings off it. It was rotten around the edges of the wings and um, never finished it, like very often happens. And uh, anyway, I bought it off him and I did a deal with him. I swapped all the old junk that I'd collected building this racing car and some money for this. I think in the end, I gave him two grand, which was not a lot of money, really. But with the knowledge that I had, I knew that you could get a 1954 car and you could put 1967 bits in it. And I had quite a lot of 1967 bits. So anyway, I decided that if I was going to build a car, I'd want to build something that I could drive and really use. I mean, I've been to the south of France twice in it, once towing my Lotus 11 and racing it at Paul Ricard. And I've done the Pomeroy two times previously. So I've used this car quite a bit. So anyway, I, I knew that if I had a 1966 or something, uh, TA21 TE, the bits would go straight on. So I thought, well, let's have disc brakes. So I put all of disc brakes on it from a TD. No, TE. And then, um, obviously, this engine doesn't have an oil filter in 1954. And I thought, well, nice to have an oil filter. And I knew that the T engine has a proper oil filter, so we decided to fit the T engine. So we fitted the T engine, which gives 120 horsepower, I think, instead of 90. So it's a little bit more powerful. The five-speed ZF gearbox, which is standard on the manual one of those, um, and the disc brakes. But also the back axle ratio was higher in the automatic car. So I fitted an automatic back axle ratio. So this car's got disc brakes, five-speed gearbox, T engine, which has got slightly bigger carburetors, which has all been done nicely. I'll show you that, because we, uh, we fitted the carburetors. I didn't want it to look anything other than standard, so I wanted the standard air cleaner and everything. So anyway, have a look under the bonnet and you'll see. This bit here is absolutely standard on a grey lady. That is a grey lady feature. Those louvers there, that's a grey lady feature. And also wire wheels. So this was like the GT version of the um, Alvis grey lady. So I had to modify the um, air cleaner manifold. This is all standard grey lady. So I had to modify that slightly and make them spaces up. 
and all the throttle linkage slightly. Oh dear, that's good, isn't it? That's a good start. Um, but dead reliable. Never really spent a load of money. Just made it up out of all the best bits we had, really. And then I had a young man work for me years ago, and he was a very good paddle beater. And he put like about six inches all the way around there. And inside there, there's like a mud flat, which is all rotted away. But the good thing about it was, and one of the reasons I bought it was, the woodwork was really good. You could get hold of the door and you could go like that and it was absolutely solid. So, obviously, that was a, I don't like woodwork, so that was a good thing. So we completely stripped it down. We never took the chassis off the body because we didn't have to. Um... We, I had it retrimmed by some blokes who worked at Aston Martin and they were Kiwis. And the hood was done by Red Triangle because the man at Red Triangle, I had an Alvis TF and it had a hood. And this man had done the hood and I left it standing out one winter and it never leaked at all. And I thought, that's the man I've got to find. So I found him, he worked at Red Triangle and I went to Red Triangle and they did the hood. Now, this was all done 15, at least 15 years ago. So, you know, as you can see, it stood up quite well. I painted it, I rubbed it down, I made it, you know, look like that. Um, Jamie, who's unfortunately no longer with us, which is hard for me to imagine because he's a really young bloke. He ain't, he's bloody dead, I can't believe it. But anyway, Jamie was a smashing boy. I've got on with him ever so well, and he helped me build the racer, and he also helped me do this. Um, so that's it, really. So now we're going to do the Pomeroy, put the yellow tape on the earth, which is another little scrutineering thing. It's got springs on the accelerator, which is another little thing that they might look for, but it has that standard. Um, and that's it, really. So as you can see, it's a lovely old car. The engine, it's a... Three litre, six cylinder engine with a seven main bearing crankshaft like a Jaguar. Um, and one of the other unique things about it is the camshaft is driven by chain but on the back of the engine. So instead of being down there on the front, it's here. So when the crank does that oscillation lock, it's not doing it because it's this end. I don't know how much that affects it, but. It looked pretty good design for me. When I built a racer, I made it dry sump and I fitted the dry sump pump on the back there. I've got a damper on the front. Lovely, good old thing, you know. It really is a good old car. And um, so there we are. So the next step will be picking Tanya up at, I don't know, seven o'clock in the morning or something and going off to Silverstone, which is only 45 minutes away, and doing the Pomeroy, but my son's doing the Pomeroy and his BMW. And young Alex, you might remember, we did the Steady Barker car. We helped, well, he did it really, but we helped him do the engine. The owner says it would be very nice to see the car doing something. So the owner's very nice to said to Alex, why don't you do the Pomeroy in it? So Alex is busy sticking stickers on it and all the things that you have to do. And he's going to do the Pomeroy as well. But he is in the same section as me. So when we have the 40 minutes round Silverstone, he's got to do 10 laps and I've got to do 10 laps. Whether I'll do 10 laps, I don't know. I don't worry about all that. I just go round and round and round. But if I can meet up with him, we're going to put a camera in the car. So if I can get him in front of me, you'll be able to see old Alex in the steady car going round. In fact, you'll see a lot of people going round. I mean, nine out of ten times, I keep up with people that I should never keep up with. But if it's raining, then we definitely keep up with them. But um, we'll see. We've got broccoli tyres, supplied by my mate Julian. So uh, that's it. Next time you see me, we're going to be on the Pomeroy.
Right, so uh, we've done the Pomeroy. I managed to do the laps. Unfortunately, the exhaust has blown, so that's how you clear that. But I, um, I still finished. So hopefully, we did ten laps, and uh, and that will be it. But this is a fantastic place for me because the first time I came here was 1952, and I came with my dad, and there was no. There was no hawker in the paddock. The paddock was a green, grassy floor. There was none of this, you know. It was an old airfield, and 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 we did a bit of racing. And the pits was a four and a half inch brickwork, and that was it. Now that was 1952. And then when I packed up um, saloon car racing, I got involved with old cars. I thought, oh, I must do the Pomeroy. And that was about 90, well it wasn't about, it was 1981 and I did it in a BMW 2002 Turbo which I was absolutely mad about those, I, I bought and sold quite a few BMW 2002 Turbos so anyway I did it and it was absolutely pouring with rain and I'll never forget it and I was flying, this car was handling like you cannot believe I think I lapped Nick Mason twice um, and he was in something very special but I mean it was absolutely flying after when I bought when I came in from the from the run there was a crowd of people around the car looking at it and one bloke said I'm going to go and buy a set of them tyres and put them on my car because he couldn't believe it the lady from the vintage sports car club said when you came around the first time we thought you'd crash <laughs> but I didn't crash it was so good, it, was, it handled like a dream and of course it was left hand drive and obviously on the first lap I bounced it off the curb a little bit so it did look a bit spectacular but there was no chance I was going to have an accident. So there we are, we've done the Pomeroy, we did the wiggle wiggle woggle and hopefully we've got a camera in the car and young Alex in the Skelly, not the Skelly car, I keep calling the Skelly car, the Steady car was just in front of me there so hopefully you'll we'll be able to see old um, Alex going round and Tanya was in the stands taking pictures of the whole thing so you never know this might turn out to be quite a good video and we'll get even more subscribers <laughs> and Susie was here she came to have a look on the way to see her mum and dad in Liverpool um, and obviously I see all the people that I've known all my life virtually um, and of course um, and quite a few subscribers because they actually come up and say listen I subscribe to your channel so I always shake hands with them because you know they're part of the family now I suppose and Tanya's um, been to Silverstone this is where they hold the British Grand Prix and it's 45 minutes from where we live so it's dead easy down the M40 but you can go home by the countryside, so on the way home we'll go on the countryside, I think. Because we don't want to be going down the motorway with all that noise, so I'll poodle down the country lanes. And um, that's it. I think it's going to be a, a successful weekend, really. No, it's a wonderful place, really. I mean, it has become a bit commercial now, but it's bound to happen. But, 
you know, it's got fabulous memories for me. And of course, you know, I raced here in saloon cars a lot. Old Jerry used to, I raced a, I raced a Bugatti here. Now, in actual fact, you can look it up on the telly. And I beat a bloke called Martin Stretton in a, in a very special little car. And um, that was really the last time I raced a Bugatti, I think. So um, we'll sort that out. But uh, no, it's, it's good, it's good, you know. I mean, this is like, what a lucky person to come through your life with no aggravation and be able to come here, see all the people that you've been seeing most of your lifetime. I, I feel very, very privileged, absolutely privileged. And my son did the Pomeroy in the 80s because we had a little old Alpha and he did it in the Alpha. See you later.